What's up, welcome back. In this episode, you're gonna learn how to solve day seven of the advent of code 2022 with Ruby. This one's called no space left on device. And it's all about sort of taking in some commands and looking at some files and looking at some directories and building up um, this concept of a file structure. So you can look at your file system and complete successfully this system update, which right now is failing because there's no space left on the device. So I don't know, we've all done this, right? Like you wanna go download some big file and from some really legit site and it's there's not enough space on your machine. And so you have to like go and find which files you wanna delete. So today's problem is like, okay, let's take in this list of commands. So CD for change directory, LS for list files. And then that's gonna show us this output that tells us, okay, there's a directory inside of the root. And inside of the root, there's also two files. One's called b.txt, the other's called c.dat. And this is like the size or like the length of those files. What we need to do is figure out how much or how big all of the different directories are. And that means that if we're looking at the root directory, that's gonna be the sizes of all the files in all uh, inside of the root directory but also inside of all of the subdirectories of the root directory. So uh, what we're gonna do is copy this input here and we're gonna just uh, open up a new file for day seven. All right, so we're gonna drop in our example input here at the bottom. The input is either going to be a command that's starting with a dollar sign. This is supposed to be kind of like your prompt and then, uh, so it'll be like a prompt, then a space, then a command, then a space, and then some arguments. And in the case of LS, there's no arguments. And when you run LS, that's gonna list out the files that are inside of that directory. And so we're gonna either get a something that starts with dir, and then a space, and then the directory name, or we're gonna get some number, and then a space, and then the file name. And so what I wanna do is, I'm gonna use pattern matching again in Ruby. So pattern matching to the rescue, uh, I'm having a lot of fun just like playing around with pattern matching and learning it. And so what I wanna do is I'm just gonna like loop over all of the lines that are here and start by pattern matching and saying like, okay, this means we're gonna change to a directory. This means we're gonna list files. This means we're encountering a directory. This means we're encountering a file. I think those are the only four cases. So it should be pretty straightforward. So we're gonna say something like data is data dot read lines. And we'll say data dot map chomp which we do on every time we're reading a bunch of lines. And now for each of these lines, what I wanna do is split on the space so that we have kind of like an array that has dollar sign, then CD, and then slash. So I'm gonna say map um, uh, again, and here I'm going to map on the um, map and split on space. Okay, that should give us an array of all these different things. Why don't we just also save this into some results and we'll print out results as we're working through this. So we'll say Ruby day seven, day seven. So that gave us what we wanted, right? We have uh, an array with an array for each entry or each line. And this first one is dollar sign CD and then some directory name. So here what I wanna do is say something like dot each do line and then we're gonna say case, the case for the line. And for now, we know that we want to match on something that has a dollar sign and then something that has a um, CD and then something that has some like directory name. And so we'll just say puts, you know, like changing into dir. And then if we run this again, what do we get? changing into slash, changing into a, changing into e, changing into dot dot. So dot dot is sort of a special case. That means we're going up a directory. So let's actually add a special case before we get to this more general case. And that is gonna be dot dot dot. And we'll say something like puts going up a level. That way we can see what's going on here. So we're changing into the root, then a, then e, then we're going up a level, going up a level, then changing into d. So this is gonna let us sort of navigate around the, the the file structure. And what I mean by navigate around is sort of just keeping track of the current path. Like you can kind of see here in my prompt, I have uh, this tilde, that means starting from my home and then slash repos slash AOC. And if I CD into day seven, 
that pushes day seven onto this stack of directories that I that will like give me the current directory. So if I do PWD, that prints out my current working directory, right? And so here, what I want to do is say like um, CWD maybe, and that'll be a an empty array to start. And if we go into a directory, we're going to say CWD, we're going to push that directory name in. Otherwise, if we're going up a directory, we're going to pop off of that, right? So if I do CD dot dot, that removes day seven from my current working directory and I'm going up a level. So that'll allow us to navigate around. All right, so we need some more cases here though. In the case of LS, there's not going to be any directory here. We're just going to say puts like listing files or something. I don't know. Like, I'm not sure we even need that, but whatever. Okay, so we're changing into this directory. We're listing some files. We're changing into that directory, listing some more files. All right, now we need to, to uh, consider the case where we are um, actually looking at like the size and the file name. So let's say puts like encountered um, file name, file with size, whatever. So we'll print that out. So now we uh, we see here, okay, we encountered file A with size dir. Uh-oh, so if it's a dir, then we actually want to do something different. So we'll again add another more specific case here, dir. This is gonna be like the dir name or something. I don't know. Puts uh, encountered directory with the dir name, okay. All right, so we encountered directory A and then we encountered file B with size blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then we encountered another directory. And so what I think we can do is for now, um, if I remove the else, that will raise an exception if we don't have any matches. So I think we're good. Um, just to confirm that is the case, um, no matching pattern error is the exception that's raised if you don't have an else block and you also don't have a match. So here we're sort of matching, we're matching everything or like all of the possible inputs, at least based on the sample input. So we've got some results and our results are, well, like our results actually don't matter and we're not actually using these for anything right now. Instead, what we're doing is we're each, we're using each to iterate over each line and then like modify this current working directory. But we also need to sort of keep track of the size of the files. So I'm going to like remove the print statements from our navigation. So from pushing and popping. And then what I'm going to do is I, Gonna, we, I don't think we actually need any, we don't need to do anything in the case of listing files or working with directories. Instead, what we care a lot about is this size here and some file name. And so every time we encounter a file, we need to keep track of its size and we also need to add that size to the current working directory but also like the size of any file impacts the size of its parent and its parent's parent and so on. Anytime we're keeping count or like sort of a histogram of anything, um, we can use a hash with default value. So here, what I think we want to do is say something like dir sizes is going to be a hash that every time we encounter a new key, we're going to set the value to zero. That way we can like easily increment it. And here, if we just said like dir sizes at the current working directory plus equals size, then what would we get? Ruby day seven, okay. And then we actually don't wanna print that out. We wanna print out um, dir sizes. So p dir sizes. Okay, so now we have the root and d, root and d, root and d, that. Okay, so I wonder if we actually want current working directory dot dupe so that, cause right now it looks like even though we're modifying the current working directory, it's showing us like the last, the last one that it had. Okay, so here we go. So the root is pointing at this value, slash a is pointing at this value, slash a slash e is pointing at this value. Okay, so I think these actually might map to what we have in the example, right? So, Total size of directory E is 584, 584, that's right. Total size of directory A is 94,008. Ooh, okay, 94,008, this should be an eight. So what we need to do now is we need to add the value of the file E to A. So rather than just adding the size here, 
we need to iterate over current working directory dot length dot times do like x or something. And we need the current working directory from like zero to x. And we need to add the size to that. I think maybe we need to also dupe this. I don't know, maybe using the slice operator will give us a dupe, let's see. Okay, there we go. So now this has 94,853. So that subtle change was that like, we went from just adding the files in the directory itself to adding the file to itself and its parent and its parent's parent and so on and so forth up the chain. So now we have, okay, so now we have this thing called directory sizes. All right, so now what we need to do is it says find all the directories with a total size of at most 100,000. So we need to iterate over dir sizes dot inject zero. I don't know. Let's like try to figure out how to sum this up. So we're going to say, um, yeah, the, so we're going to get a sum and then we're going to get the, a directory and a size. And we want to do sum plus size if size is greater than Oh, at most is less than or equal to a hundred thousand. Undefined method plus for nil class. Dur, 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 dur. Okay, so is this what we're expecting? P, no. P. Oh wait, P size. Okay, that is the sizes. Oh, you know what? Since we're doing inject, we need. Okay, we need to do like or. So sum plus, so, so if size is less than or equal to that, then we need to do sum plus size. Otherwise we just do sum. Okay, so I think, boom. Okay, so this is 95,000 for blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the total sum of their sizes is that. Okay, so that is the answer for the test input for part one. So now we need to grab our actual input. So we're gonna grab our puzzle input here and we're gonna create a new file, day seven input. Paste it all in, and then we need to modify our thing here. So we're gonna just say like, if argv.empty, otherwise we're gonna say data is file.readlines of argv at zero. And okay, so now we can say Ruby of day seven input. And we get back this giant number. And let's see if that's the same. Boom, okay. So that is the answer for part one. Very cool. Um, so again, we, oh gosh, I love these pipeline things. <laughs> so here we are, I mean, we could probably do some even like fancier stuff with inject to like modify whatever, but like this is fine. We're like iterating over it and we're modifying this thing. It's not immutable whatever, it's not like, you know, this functional, functional fanciness. One improvement we can make because we're not actually using this directory is we can just put like underscore there to ignore it. And we should still get the same, uh, same result. So that's kind of handy. If there's arguments to a block that you don't actually need, you can use the underscore. Here we have to use these parentheses, I think, because, yeah, because we want to destructure that key value. Um, so the first argument to the block for inject is going to be our accumulator. In this case, the sum that's going to be default zero, default set to zero. So we're iterating over all of our, uh, our hash, we're iterating over the hash, right? And, um, as we're iterating, we're keeping track of an accumulator. That's our sum. And every time we encounter a new element in the hash, we're gonna pass its key, which we don't care about, and we're throwing away with this underscore, and the value, which is the size that we stored up here. And then this, we're gonna to check to see if the size is less than 100,000. And if it is, then we're gonna um, add that to our accumulator. And whatever's returned from the block, that's gonna be the next, the next value of the accumulator for the next element as we go through this. Okay, so let's take a look at part two. All right, we're now we're ready to uh, choose a directory to delete. The total disk space available on the file system is this. So we have our total, and to run the system update, we need at least this. So needed is this. 
you need to find a directory that you can delete that will free up enough space to run the update. So um, what we like, I guess taken is going to be dir sizes of slash, right? Like if we look at what is the total value of root, that should give us how much is taken. So let's so that's, that is how much is free space. So the free space is total minus how much is already used, right? Okay, so then what we need, so delete at least is gonna be needed minus the free space, right? There we go. Okay, so that tells us how much we need to delete at least. Now what we need to do is go through the directories and figure out which ones we need to delete. So I think we want to sort the values. Um, so yeah, so let's go through like dir sizes.values.sort.find where the size is greater than delete at least. Let's see. All right, is that the one? Okay, increasing the use space by that. So the one that we delete is that one. Okay, fantastic. So let's run this against our input. And we get this answer, 942. Okay, so that is the answer for part two. Okay, so we have, this is the total space in the system. This is how much we need for our update. The total free space is like how much is on the entire disk minus how much is already used. We figure out how much is used by just passing in the root directory and we get back how much is free. Now we, to, in order to figure out how, like which directory we want to delete, we want to delete the one directory that will give us enough free space to install the update. And so to figure out that directory, we need to figure out like um, how much we need to delete. So we need to delete at least how much space we need for the update minus how much space is left over and free because we didn't use it as part of our file structure already. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate over the sorted values, the sorted sizes, and find the first one that is greater than um, that value. So find here, we'll call the block until it returns true and then whatever the value is, it will return that value and print it out. So that's how we got the answer. All right, so this was a pretty fun, pretty fun one. The hardest part I think is probably like parsing the input into the right like tree structure. And when I was first thinking about this, initially I considered using like classes for the nodes and uh, you know, building up sort of like a tree structure. And then I was like, oh, but wait, the, I want to try to use pattern matching again. So let's um, let's keep messing around with Ruby's pattern matching. And uh, yeah, so we have like the most specific case at the top, in which case we're popping out of the current working directory. Then we have a um, more generic cases as we go down. And then ultimately, like this was also kind of part of the problem, which was making sure that we're building up and keeping track of the sizes of all the files for the like leaf like the bottom most leaf node directories and also propagating that all the way back up to the parent. Yeah, again, another like really fun use of just kind of like calling a bunch of methods on Ruby classes. So thanks so much for watching. If you're enjoying this, go ahead and hit subscribe and uh, we'll have a few more of these coming down the pipe. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.